Good morning, everyone. We gather together with the light that surrounds us. Our candles remind us of the stories of Jesus and the love that he calls us to share. Welcome to South Shore United Church, to our all-ages service this day. And a special greetings to visitors who are here with us and any who are joining us online. Today, we extend a special Happy Father's Day to the dads who are in our midst. Happy Father's Day and many blessings to each of you. And we remember those dads no longer physically with us, but are, who are present in spirit and blessing us in this time. We are God's family together here, and every one of you is welcome and loved. The bulletins today are given in loving memory of Ina and Gordon Carr, remembered by Bert and Deborah Carr, and in loving memory of Stephen Clement, remembered by Barb Elaine and families. The additional candles that we light this month are in memory of the Reverend Lake Clayton Lewis, who served while who died while serving the Tryon Hampton Pastoral Church. Coffee time after church starts today. We had hoped for a slightly nicer day so we could have that outside. But because of the weather, we will be in the fellowship room. So following worship, you're welcome to uh, avoid the rain outside and walk down this uh, aisle here and down the hallway, and you will find the fellowship room and time to share together in that time. Camp Abbey, there are a variety of announcements in your bulletins and at the end of the slideshow about the camp and what it offers and the support that they need from us. What I'd like to highlight today is that we do as a congregation offer support to our campers. So if you are aware of any children or youth within our wider church family who need support so they can attend camp, just give us a call and we will make sure that that support is offered. Tonight, I'd like to highlight a covenanting service that will be occurring between the Reverend Christine McLeod, Park Royal United Church, and the Fundy St. Lawrence Donning Waters Regional Council. That will be at Park Royal tonight at 7 o'clock. I'm the guest preacher. Maybe you would guess why, because that's my sister who is going to be part of that um, covenanting service. So you are all welcome. It is a regional service, so it's nice to have congregations to come in support of the ministry expressed through that place. As we gather in worship, we acknowledge that the land upon which we work, worship, and play is by law the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. As we make this acknowledgement, we remember back with gratitude for their stewardship of the land, and we look forward with a commitment towards peace and justice between all peoples who inhabit this place. I invite you in our call to worship today, we're going to be a little creative. So everywhere you see a dot dot pause, after your line, just take a little breath. I have some fun symbols to put on the table and around here to remind us of what these things mean. So I wonder, why do we come to church? Some of us come to be still and listen. And for those listening in online, we have a little monkey who is sitting quiet and listening. This is a place we can learn. And so we place a Bible full of stories and teachings. And grow. And I have a lovely plant shared with me by a friend. And try new things. Who wants to try? This is a space we can be who we are and find support. I wonder, is church really important? When, when we feel loved and accepted, when we learn and grow together, we feel full of God's love and hope and joy. 
we feel empowered to share, to offer care in the world. Sorry, I got distracted by my symbols. All of these symbols remind us that we are loved as we are and when we're loved and let everybody be who they are, we recognize that amazing love of God flowing through us and among us. We're going to sing about that love with our next hymn, Your Love is Amazing. We lift our voices and feel connected to God through song. We also lift our voices together in prayer. So I invite you to join all of our voices together as we pray. Creator, thank you for making me me. Thank you for your love. Thank you for dads who share love with us. Forgive them and forgive us when we make mistakes. Help us to learn and grow together to be the people you want us to be. Fill us with your hope, joy, and love, for we continue to pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The story I would like to share with you today is a story from the Bible in a part that is called Matthew's Gospel. And this story is about Jesus and his friends. And they've been doing a lot of traveling. They traveled to villages and to towns and to cities. And as they went from place to place, Jesus would meet people. Some were sad. Some were afraid. Some of them were very worried about things. Some of them were lonely. And Jesus reached out to help them. Some of the people who were sick, he helped to heal. In some places, he taught them stories to help them make better choices in their lives. In other places, he reminded them, God loves you. I love you. And he passed that message around. But there were so many people and so much work to do that Jesus was thinking, I can't do this all alone. And then he had an idea. He said to his friends and followers, you know, this is just like a farmer. 
When it's harvest time, can the farmer bring in all of the harvest alone? Do you think the farmer can bring everything in alone? No. What does the farmer have to do, I wonder? What do these farmers have to do? Do they do it all alone? No. They get some helpers, don't they? They get helpers to care for the animals, to clean out some of the barns. They get helpers to go out on the machines. They get helpers to sort the potatoes, all those kinds of things. And Jesus said, that's what I'm going to do. I want you to be my helpers. And so Jesus said, hey, uh, Peter, Peter, I want you to go to the next village and tell the people I love them. And, oh, Susanna, I want you to go to that town down that other road, and I want you to tell them some of the stories that I've been sharing with you. Peter and Andrew and and Thaddeus, I want you to go on to another village, and there try to help the people who are sick. And so, Jesus began to ask his various friends to be his helpers. Now, I wonder, do some of you know the names of some of those friends? Some of them were called disciples. Does anybody know some of the disciples' names? Shout them out for me. Peter? Matthew? Matthew? James, John, Judas, Judas. does somebody down here know one? Helen, do you know one? Thomas, yes. Does anyone know some of the others? Peter had a brother, and Peter's brother's name was Andrew. And James had a brother named John, and we've named both of them. So we have Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And there are others, and we have a song that's going to help us remember them. There was Thaddeus, and Matthew, and Philip, and Bartholomew. There's a whole bunch of them. But it wasn't just men, you know. Sometimes we think those disciples were just guys. But there were others who were helpers. I wonder, do some people know the names of some of the women who were Jesus' helpers? Hmm. Yes, Susanna, you were listening. Thank you, yes. There was Susanna, and there's Mary, and Mary had a sister, Martha, and there was another Mary, There were all kinds of people. There was a woman named Dorcas. So there were many, many helpers that Jesus asked to go out like the farm workers and help him to spread love and healing to all of the people. Now, the song I'm going to get the choir to help us learn is one we learned at Regional Council, and it's a different way of singing Jesus Loves Me. So, we're going to see if we can pull this off together and have a little bit of fun. It starts off with a stump stump, and Jennifer's going to help us get this going. So, we'll sing it through once, and then you can join in with us.
people who followed Jesus stayed with him because he filled them up with teachings and stories that helped them in their lives. They also knew that he loved them no matter what. Even if they made mistakes, he showed them his love stayed with them. And as that filled them up, even after Jesus died, they were able to remember his stories and teachings and his love so that he always felt like he was a part of them. Now, one thing they remembered was that story about the farmer. And they shared that with other people and they began to follow that story and realize they couldn't do all the work alone that Jesus had shared with them. They needed to go out and find other workers to help as well. And so they began to go into lots of different communities and places to share God's love, to share the teachings and stories Jesus taught them. And when they did that, what happened was people became filled up with that love and it bubbled out of them and into the world around them so that more and more people began to feel that love and care. And when that happened, more communities got together and more communities. And today, thousands of years later, we still get together to share those stories, to remember those teachings and allow them to guide our lives. We remember Jesus' love and how we need to fill up with that love so that it will bubble out of us and into the world where we can share and be helpers today. So let's think about how we can fill up with that love. How can I fill my mind? Let me think. Oh, my mind is starting to think, oh, Karen, you made a mistake. You're stupid. Is that filling up my mind with love, do you think? No. no. So what else could I be saying instead of something like that? How can I share kind words to myself? I'm helpful. Oh, I'm helpful. So I can tell myself, I am helpful. What can I say? You can do it. You can do it. Yes, Karen, you can do it. You can do it. That's right. I am smart. I can do things, and even if I make mistakes, that's okay. I'm learning, and I can. I work hard, yes. Thank you. So we can all be saying those kinds of kind thoughts to ourselves and to other people so that we can fill our minds with that love. Now, what about our eyes? What can we see with love? Look around. What, what good things do you see all around? I see wonderful people. What do you see when you look around here? Kindness in people around us, yeah? I see some pretty colors. Do you see pretty colors around us? Families, we see families, yes? Look around, what do you see? Smiles, some smiles, pictures, some beautiful pictures in our windows and on the wall, decorations all around. So when we keep looking to see all the beautiful things, that fills us up some more. And let's see, what can I say? What could I say? How about, I love you. Can you help me say that to other people? I love you. Can you say that with me? Let's get everybody to say it and look around. I love you. I, I love you. you. And when we do that, oh, that starts to bubble up inside, doesn't it? It feels good. So, taking time to fill our bodies, our hearts, our mouths and eyes and heads with that love 
helps it to bubble up. But for it to take shape and go with us into the world, we have to keep filling up all the time. I have something to show you. This is something to help us remember. If I pull this out, these bubbles that I have, if I pull this out, is anything going to happen? But it doesn't do anything if I don't blow into it, does it? I have to do my part, don't I? I have to put my breath into the bubbles for them to be shared. And that's what Jesus was teaching us. We have to do our part. Once we fill up with good things, we get to be the helpers Jesus needs. Now, guess what? I have bubbles for all of you. And we're going to blow them once inside here, and then we're going to save them to take outside afterwards. Okay? How about that? <laughs> There, and mom and dad get one? Yes. I'll put some extra on the back, so if anybody would like to share bubbles, would you like to share bubbles? Awesome. Would you like to share some bubbles? The choir is going to sing to remind us we are holy together. make many different offerings to help share that love in the world. Some people make offerings through the food bank. Some people have made offerings to Camp Abbey. Some people offer gifts on our offering plate. Some people offer gifts of time in lots of ways. And so we say thank you for the ways that you share and that we are all helpers to give that love of God into the world. People make many different offerings to help share that love in the world. Some people make offerings through the food bank. Some people have made offerings to Camp Abbey. Some people offer gifts on our offering plate. Some people offer gifts of time in lots of ways. And so we say thank you for the ways that you share and that we are all helpers to give that love of God into the world. We're going to do an action prayer to say our thanks. Can I have our words up on the screen? Thank you. So I'll say it first. We give our hands to you. You can say that back to me. We give our hands to you to share what we have. 
to share what we have. We give our ears to you. We give our ears to you to listen to one another. To listen to one another. We give our mouths to you. We give our mouths to you to share kind words. To share kind words. We give our eyes to you. We give our eyes to you to see the beauty all around us. To see the beauty all around us. We give our hearts to you. We give our hearts to you to care for all your world. To care for all your world. Amen. And our dedication song is Grant Us God. are our way of saying thanks to God or sharing with God things that are happening in our lives. And in our church family, this is a time we are celebrating. We are saying thank you, God, for some special young people in our congregation. We are celebrating some of our young adults. Jonathan Harmon has graduated with a Master of Science in Civil Engineering. Chanel McPhail has graduated from UPEI with a degree in environmental studies. David Lowther graduated from UPEI with a Bachelor of Business Administration specializing in accounting. Mary Lowther graduated from UNB with a Bachelor of Nursing. Jennifer Stewart graduated from UPEI with a Bachelor of Education. Julia McDonald graduated from UPEI with a Bachelor of Nursing and is working at Kings County. Hannah Thompson has graduated from UPEI with a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology. So let us take our hands to our hearts and send our love through our prayers to all of those young adults for the new steps they are taking forward to serve in the world in all those ways. Yay, Mallory! So Mallory, a little bit older young adult... <laughs> We celebrate with Mallory in her achievement. Anyone else that I missed? And now we remember our high school students. We have some high school students from our church family. Janae Spence, Owen Connolly, Amber Colbeck, Charlotte Thompson, and Colby Russell, who are graduating from Bluefield, and from Kinkora, Ty Sherry. So, hands to our hearts, we send our love through our prayers for all of those young people and the new directions their lives will take in the fall. And today we remember and give thanks for dads. So our hands go out to all the dads who serve in so many ways. Thank you, God, for all of these people. We send our love into the world. Amen. Our prayers, our actions, our words make a difference. So let's go make a difference with our next song.
May God's love and hope go with us so we can make a difference in the world. And as we leave this time, I remind you, through the doors, fellowship time is in the fellowship room um, following service today. And our next All Ages service is going to be in July, and that'll be at Argyle Shore. We'll be outside in the beauty of creation. So let us go with God's blessing.